Welcome to The Advocate, the program that keeps you educated and informed on current events around you. I'll be talking about constructive politicking, competence and brotherhood above tribalism. Oludolakpo Ojilabi will be talking about how the new Nigeria starts with you. Stephen Agiode will be talking about beavers, election management and black holes. Today, expect interesting conversations that concerns all Nigerians. We will be back after this break. Constructive politicking, competence and brotherhood above tribalism. The ongoing general elections in Nigeria demonstrate the need to rise above tribal sentiments and prioritize reliability in decision making. Using Lagos State as a case study, the overshadowing conversations regarding the forthcoming gubernatorial election are much centered around the tribal affiliation of majorly the candidate of Labour Party, Gbadibo Rodisvaivo, in comparison with other candidates, including the incumbent governor, Babajide Sanwulu of APC. In the same vein, the threats and targeted attacks on businesses owned by persons of different tribal affiliation in a bid to suppress their right to exercise their franchise. This is rather an unfortunate scenario as the tribal sentiment obliterates the importance of brotherhood in our society and the proper competence-driven decision-making process that would fast-track our common growth and development as a cosmopolitan city. However, Nigerians have spoken and we must accept that and work with our choices while reflecting on the irrelevant social divides that we allow to hinder progress. In Nigeria, competence should be prioritized over tribalism in all aspects of life, especially in politics. It is heartening to see the emergence of Iriti Kingube as the first elected female senator of the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja under the auspices of the Labour Party. This achievement is a testament to the importance of competence as well as the need to break the gas ceiling across various fields and celebrate the achievement of women. Dr. Ngozi okonjo Wiala, the Director General of the World Trade Organization at the 2023 International Women's Day Summit held in Geneva, was, has called for more inclusive policies regarding women in the economy and other sectors of the human endeavor. This measure should be heeded not just by parastatas, but also by all kinds of community. We must strive to create a society that values competence and inclusivity over tribalism and division. As we celebrate Women's Month, let us continue to break barriers and create opportunities for women and men to excel in all areas of life and continually break the bias of tribalism, patriarchy, ethno-religious sentiment. Let us conclude by pondering on these words of Idu Koyeni Kong an international acclaimed organizational consultant and author in the U.S. You can no longer see or identify yourself solely as a member of a tribe, but as a citizen of a nation, of one people, working towards a common purpose. So, I said two things. One is about the importance for um, raising our consciousness of brotherliness, good neighborliness, national cohesion, and nationalism above tribal sentiments. You saw what happened this period. The election is coming up, the gubernatorial election, and there is much talk about the tribal affiliation of the Liberal Party candidate, JRV, uh, Badibo revival. He has, um, according to findings, his father or his parents have been, or his, his ancestry, they've been in Lagos for over 400 years. But no, in this time, his father got married to, or his, his mother is an Igbo woman. So his father is a rubber man, a Lagosian, married to an Igbo woman. He himself married to an Igbo woman. I think his wife is the daughter of the former military governor of Borno State, Major General Igbo. Now, this issue, rather than seeing our, our politicians, rather than seeing how to come together and, and tell us what you want to do and why convincing us why we should vote for you. You see them downplaying the politics by bringing tribal sentiments. Like, why would you vote? Why should Lagosians vote for Badibo? That's what they say. So there's no, there's much talk about tribalism, tribal tension, and then you see the attack on some persons from 
mostly maybe Southeast extraction doing their businesses here and being um, threatened by persons that claim that they are Lagosians for them to vote a candidate of their choice. And I'm saying that this is not a very good thing. And then the issue of um, um, Dr. Nkoju Ogonju Iweala delivered his speech during the International Women's Day and she was emphasizing the need for competence. Women should be given a chance, not just because they are women. Competence, anybody, man or woman, should be given a chance. That's how we can deliver Nigeria. So I want to hear your take on this. Uh, well, on... <coughs> um, it's unfortunate that uh, we have come to this. Um, I, I think the issue that arose was not even the, the fact whether Rhodes Viva is a, is a Lagosian or not. It was more that he was not a Yoruba man. And um, it's unfortunate that after we have gone through a civil war, we should be still talking like this. Some of these elements that are making this call, I've forgotten that only recently, and I'm, I know many of them celebrated it. In Nigeria, a person of Nigerian origin who had lived here with us for long, Kebi, Kemi Badinoch, yeah. who not long ago left for the UK, was contesting and almost, in fact, won the, the UK producer. prime ministership. Nobody in England was talking about uh, Nigerians coming to take over London. Wow. Nobody was talking of us taking over Britain. It's unfortunate that, uh, and in, in fact, the British Prime Minister is of Indian origin, and nobody talks about it. Yeah, Rishi Sunak. Uh -huh. The important thing is his competence and his ability to govern in the country. It's unfortunate that uh, at this stage of our national life, we should be talking like this. Um, I think we should have got a, a stage where we re recognize that the most important thing is the competence of the person. And in any case, what are we really talking about? Who can be more negotiable than a, a root virus? Yeah. Uh, we have been existing uh, for a very long time. If you Lagos. go back in our history, Lagos was a colony. Yeah. And some of the people that are saying this, why in what would have qualified to be called the hinterland? But no one wants to go there. Today, we should recognize that we are all Nigerians. We are all brothers. Uh, we stand in brotherhood, even though our origins may be different. So uh, I'm surprised that uh, such an issue should be coming up at, at this time. Sure. So I, I want to say something that before you come up. You know, during the last, you, you cited Kemi Badenok and the yes. Richie Sunak emergence as the yeah. Prime Minister of UK. Yes. Richie Sunak is from an Indian and says, um, Indian uh, is a descent of Indi an Indian descent. Mm. Let me use the language. An Indian descent. Yes. His parents um, migrated to the to Britain, yes. and uh, he schooled there and the rest. Yes. But you see, you see, have much tie towards his cultural heritage from India. Yes. But he's the prime minister he's of prime minister. Britain. No, and then in in America, during the last election, the la the midterm election they had last year. There were instances where I saw Nigerians, some Nigerians contesting other the Republican no, we Party. Were some Republican Party. We were even it, though yeah. when even though maybe some did not win, but for the fact that they even clinched the ticket in the first place. Yeah. And then if you go to um you see the you see the hypocrisy here. This this person, the uh, Simon Ikpa, right? Yes. Yeah, the IPOP, one of the IPOP chief team. He's handling a very important office appointment in Finland, right? Mm -hmm. If you go to Canada, there are a lot of Nigerians handling political appointments or being elected into office. And nobody is talking about African invasion or Nigerian invasion. And we go there, we Nigerians, we travel to this country hoping that we we'll one day become president of this country yeah, or I'm even, sure and you know, and also contribute their quota to the world yeah. of this country. But mm -hmm. in our own country, we wouldn't want to allow our fellow brothers simply because if you say you are from so, so, so tribe, uh, don't come and do it fact, here. One famous, so writer, <laughs> one famous writer said, one of our, uh, Nathan Joy, one of our writers said, if ethnicity were racism, we will, the way we are carrying on, we will probably carry the banner of the most racist people in the world. Sure. It's unfortunate. Uh, th these are the things Obama was talking of when he visited Kenya the other time. You, you are not going to get anywhere if you emphasize tribe. You are going to get somewhere if you emphasize competence. competence. We are all from somewhere. Sure. Uh -huh. sure. We, historically, we have not gained anything from emphasizing 
tribal conflict. All we get from it is tribal conflict, tribal division, tribal and all that. It's and no, we, no good reason. No, no. There's nothing so good that you, comes a, out a certain of president expects, uh, for instance, the, the, the president of um, the candidate of the uh, APC, mm -hmm. Ashwa Dubola Ahmed Tinubu, he expects to get vote from the southeast and other part of yeah. Nigeria. Of course. And then yeah. Peter Obi also expects to get vote from the southwest yeah. and other part of Nigeria. Yeah. So yeah. if you are playing tribe, there's no need of us having a president yeah. exactly. and seeking for vote from anywhere. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to hear your thoughts, sir. Um, Oludulapo. Mm. Okay. So I think the first thing I'll say is that racism is everywhere. Uh, racism is the senior brother of tribalism. Exactly. It's the same thing. <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, they are siblings. Okay. Um, the important thing is that it's human nature to default to your lowest level of identity. So, mm -hmm. for instance, when Nigerians go out, of, when they meet outside the country, tribalism is not as emphasized, you know, because we are Nigerians. When you're in Nigeria, then you fall into um, yeah, tribalism. You know, even within the tribe, there are divisions. Exactly. You find the Yorubas, the Oyos, and the Ibadan people, and they all have differences. If you go within the city, there are differences in families. Your family is this, your family is that. So it's human nature. What is unnatural is actually taking the time to build bridges. So that what we are focusing on is what we have in common. If you say competence, that's still, um, I mean, for me to know you are competent, then I must be able to assess what you've done, you know, score it, make sure it's measured. Mm -hmm. um, what is critical is building bridges. If we say we don't expect that we're going to do to, to respond this way, my question is, what have we done to make sure that people don't default to this behavior? You understand? What do we have in common? We're all humans. We feel emotions. We have the same desires, fears, you know, at the end of the day. So I'm not, in, in summary, I'm not surprised what is going on. And, and I think it's a wake-up call to, because it's showing us fault lines. When we are pressurized, this is how we react. We fall back to those identity levels. And we need to consciously take the step to build bridges to make sure that, um, like you said last week, I think, travel, get to know people beyond what you've heard, um, you know, form personal connections and get deeper insight into the humanity of people. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you something, your thought on this. What's the constitution, according to the Nigerian constitution, a Nigerian can live anywhere. Nigeria is an indivisible territory, right? Yeah, yeah. You lawyers are good with yeah, these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an indivisible territory, right? Mm -hmm. Every part of Nigeria is Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you're in Lagos, you're in Nigeria. As a Nigerian, you can live, thrive, and work in any part of Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to understand, a Nigerian can also be vote and be voted for in any part of Nigeria, exactly. irrespective of tribal background. Exactly. Why is it that we have not realized the full potential of this? You still see people giving birth to their children in one part of... Let me use Lagos ex again as a case study. Let's say, for instance, now, Many of us were giving birth to in Lagos, a lot of us. Mm. But your parents would tell you, oh, your state of origin, when you are feeling from state of origin, you will call your father's state. Mm. But they gave birth to you in Lagos, mm. right? Mm. So the question is, why can't we just realize the full potential of that clause in the Constitution? Mm. Anybody, maybe it means if you are, if you are a descent of Hausa, mm. Fulani, Igbo, Yoruba, what have you, mm. Shekiri. But if you are living in a particular side, especially when you are giving birth to in that side, you are supposed to be able to play your role in that part, or you've stayed, you've contributed to the development of that part of the country, you should be voted and be voted for. In, in, in the early days in Nigeria, I think a Malam, or this a Fulani man, was one time mayor in Enugu, right? Yes, yes it was. This yeah. thing happened. That was Nigeria. Why can't we have this repeated? Why is much emphasis on you are from social states? And Why? I might add, an Igbo man was once uh, uh, head of the uh, Lagos City Council. But the point I, I want to make, we have been independent for say over 60 years now. The point Olu makes is important. But the truth is, I also see that at the level of ordinary Nigerians, a lot of us have come together and we have intermixed. 
in front, in front of many of your houses or your neighbors and all that, you find you live with evils, you live with houses, and you really have no significant problem with them. What is dangerous and what we must not allow to continue is to use our divisions as a political strategy to win votes. That's, that's what is dangerous now. Toxic politicking. Toxic politicking. That is what divides people, creates the situation, like what happened in Rwanda, like what happened in Bosnia. Yes. It's, it, when you use, um, when, when you manipulate people politically to win votes, that's the dangerous thing. It's happened before, and we are seeing it happening again. At the, um, at the lower levels between people, the, our people don't have problems within themselves. Yeah, poverty the, has the, no tribe. No, the Igbo man and the Yoruba man and the Hausa man and the Bibio man, really, they have no problem within them. They, they deal with themselves. They relate. They trade together. It's not as if there's a major problem between us, but it is dangerous for politicians to keep dividing us, manipulating us. Because if you look at it, at, at, at the top, they are actually united. Sure. So it's unfortunate that any politician will think that he wants to use to divide us. And it's dangerous. We it's shouldn't a, go this way. It's a strategy. Mm. But people just manipulated them. And look at what happened. Look at the, in Bosnia. You, can, you can't tell a Muslim from a non-Muslim. But political manipulation can do anything. I personally can't tell a Jew from a German. But look at what political manipulation do, did. Yeah, so, so, so it's very dangerous. And it's something that, that we should guard against. Sure, it's a road that we should not pass. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Yes. So that means there's no need of we crying foul of racism when we are committing the same thing. Right? Exactly. It's like Kato calling Port Black. We, 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 you, you accuse the British or the Americans for allowing racism to thrive in their country, and yet in your own country, African countries, you, you, you yeah, tribalism, yeah, exactly. which is so. How, how do we guard against it? You said. Yes, I think um, uh, polit our political actors recently signed a peace accord. Uh, the president was there, and everybody was there. I was. I was saying at the time, ah, you, if you don't have mechanism for enforcement, why are you signing any form of accord? So the issue is now on the ground now. There is a peace accord, but people are using tribe and to cause confusion to breach the peace. I don't know what that peace committee can do to step in now. Because now we are seeing it, like I said before, there was no mechanism for enforcement. Yeah. But the peace committee ought to speak up. It's supposed to be a special tribunal. Yes, the, the, to look at. Yes, no, the, the peace committee is supposed to be the one that uh, comes out and talks and enforces these things. I see some of them talk. Father Cook has been uh, yeah. has been talking. Yeah. He has been yeah. criticizing the Bishop Cooker. Uh, yes, Bishop Cooker. He has been criticizing all the uh, spokesmen for the political parties so, uh, for, for, for their principles, the betrayalic language they have been using. He has been condemning it. But beyond that the peace committee needs to come out and say this kind of politics is not right and perhaps they need to name names yeah need to point they to people to and, uh -huh, people and shame yeah. maybe we yeah. need to shame people so it's that they, they uh, yeah, exactly so that the principals call their people to order that some of these things are not uh, imagine an audacity not someone about. had put something on social media and was making reference to the Labour candidate, Labour uh, Party gubernatorial candidate of Lagos and said he's not going to be emerge as governor. In fact, threatening him. Yeah. And you know, the police is not supposed to wait. Yeah. They are supposed to apprehend such individual yeah. because it's a crime. The police That's will have a, a role to play hate because speech. you see, we are seeing the beginnings of people burning places and all that. We Destroying don't people's know. houses, uh, threatening uh, voters, threatening telling voters, them you must vote for social person. But more than that, the political leaders too need to step in. The peace committee needs to step in, and uh, I think what we are, what we are seeing more is uh, toxic manipulation of of uh, uh, tribal sentiments to end votes, and that should stop. All right, thank you very much. Before we round up, this is Women's Month. We will not stop without saying something to encourage all the women yeah. in Nigeria, yeah, okay. so and in Africa and the world. Yeah. You know, I said you, um, Dr. Okunjo Wiala. Mm. I said some things about um, the need for giving women a chance and encouraging them. Women are competent. Competence has no gender. 
That is, the, I'm trying to paraphrase what she said in Geneva, mm. during the International Women's Day celebration, held March 8th. And then I listened to Christian Amapol on mm. CNN too. Mm. She was recounting her experiences, you know, as a CNN war correspondent, you know, going to where, especially where there are crises, like if you go to Afghanistan, Iraq, the issue of uh, hijab, suppressing women's rights to education and other things. So let's just say something to encourage women, mm. especially we have some women that just emerge for the first time, like uh, Hiri Tikingibe mm -hmm. as the first uh, senator elect of uh, Abuja, and some other women too, trying one way or the other to do something positive in the country and the world at large. So I just want to hear one thought from you to so round up. Let me start with you, Mr. Oludulakpo. Just say something positive and we will move to Mr. Agyode. Okay, uh, something positive. Mm. <laughs> um, I think if we focus on competence, above all, uh, the opportunities are going to show themselves. And as society becomes better, you know, it will become more accessible to, um, you know, the female gender more than it is now. Mrs. Gwajabe was once in, in that position, I a think, long a long time ago. Kerat Gwajabe was the first a senator from Abuja. Yeah, FCT, right? FCT, yes, yes, yes. So it's a good thing that um, King Gigby Iriti is continuing in that the, track. Yes. yes, although it was broken, right? Yes, it was the broken yeah, in, between. Yeah, yeah, in between. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your inputs. So let's try our best to see how to encourage politics that had void of tribalism, hatred, any form of bigotry against one another. Nigeria belongs to everyone. I know Nigeria is more Nigerian than any other Nigeria, both within and outside Nigeria. Oludulakpo Ojilabi is next after the break. <laughs>